Well, the reason why I started using digital hand bottling was because my Marshall head, my JCM 800, got stolen out of a truck. And we were on tour, and we were somewhere in Philadelphia, and it all got stolen, the whole truck. So I love that Marshall amp, and it was modified by this guy in Los Angeles, and I, I told him, look, I wanted this amp to sound exactly like the first Van Halen record, because I love that tone. So when he actually modified the head, I was like, wow, that sounds just like it. And so that was, that became my sound, that tone. Obviously, you know, it's not just the amp, obviously it's your right hand, the guitars, the pickups, the woods, all the above, but ultimately it's your hand. So we were on tour and it got stolen and I was like, what am I gonna do? So I went to Guitar Center, me and my tech, and we, we lined up all these amps, you know, the Mesa Boogies, the, the early EVHs, uh, or the 5150s or whatever you wanna call it at that time, and nothing was really hitting for me. Then there was this one digital amp that somebody brought in. Harry, you might like this. It was a Line 6 flex tone head. And it was like, they had just came out and I was like, I plugged it in. I was like, wow. It was, you know, obviously it's a solid state. And it was a, I believe it was at that time, it was like a 16 bit capture of an amplifier. And so I was playing that and it's, and it's like, wow, it responded really well. So I started using that live. After that, they came out with their first rack mount. And I was using power amps to power that into cabinets. But then eventually I just stopped using cabinets. By, by 99, 2000, I was not using cabinets anymore. And it was just going direct to house. And I just realized how the benefits of not having a cab on stage, one, because you had more production you could put on stage. Two, you didn't have the, you know, the typical backdrop of all these cabinets stacked up behind you. Plus it was added a lot of benefits to the sound man out front because they had more control of your tone. And there was less mic bleed coming from the cabs or anybody could have jumped on stage and just kicked the mic, which has happened a thousand times. Where you know, like some one of your techs or somebody comes by, trips on the on the cable or hits the mic and it just moves, and it changes your tone. I mean, some people still like the air behind it. I get it, but for me, it was like, it was way more control. It was way more consistent because you know, again, you're you're still at the mercy of a live microphone. One of the benefits for me when I was using all those digital amp modeling systems live is like I didn't have to you know, spend a lot of money. I mean, there's so many details into not having to do stuff like that because you could carry everything on the plane. You didn't have to pay for shipping. You didn't have to pay extra gas for the extra weight on your bus or the trailer. You know, there's a lot of things that, that take into factor why I decided to use this for the last 22 years. I ended up switching 100% to those and committed to those digital amp modeling system. Line 6 came out with numerous of ones and, you know, obviously XFX, Fractal. The technology is getting better and better and better every year. And now, you know, obviously we have plugins for our computer. We've had it for, for a long time now, but now they're getting better and better and better. And the technology is getting better. The sampling rate's getting better. So it's becoming more powerful. And here I am today, still using it. Yeah, well, obviously, as amp modeling had progressed, you know, now we have these plugins that are just becoming better and better and better. Nowadays, we have, you know, all these pretty much bedroom players that are just, you know, basically on YouTube and showing off their videos and everybody can just play at home. I call it laptop core because now you can just create a song off your laptop. My life has, for the past 30 years of my career has pretty much been on tour. You got to find ways to to travel lighter because you can just put your laptop in your backpack and, uh, you know, you have all your all your plugins on your laptop you can just create songs in the back of your bus or in the backstage or anywhere you know people do it at school people do it at, in their in their you know bedroom everywhere so those are pretty much the benefits that we have some new school kids don't even know what a real head looks like or a real cabinet looks like it's because they're growing up with these plugins now and and i think it's amazing because you know a lot of people some people still don't understand that you know creating music on your laptop a lot of people think it's cheating or it's like um like for i'll give an example we put a record out back in 2011 and it was called the industrialist and we used the drum program for the album because at the time we didn't have a drummer we announced that we used this drum program and we got so much backlash from it that it almost kind of canceled the record because we didn't have a live drummer but little did 
those people know that people have been using this stuff for years. People have been using these drum programs for years. It's on more records than people think. And, you know, people use those same benefits live, right? And, it, you know, it all goes hand in hand. And I look at it this way. You could still be using those plugins, those drum programs, whatever it is. You still got to get creative with it. And that's where it comes. It still starts with your mind and still you got to, you know, create something killer out of it. And that's pretty much what we've been doing. We've been literally... We've been manipulating sound since, you know, way back when we first started. So that Marshall that was stolen back in 1999, 22 years later, I ended up getting it back. And uh, the original head, the original, the original uh, case that it came in, I needed to get it. It was, it was pretty beat up and I needed to get it uh, fixed. And so I sent it over to Mike Fortin. He looked at it and goes, wow. And he pretty much rewired some of the stuff because it was pretty rusty and it's been a long time. And obviously the guy who had it didn't take care of it very well. So I decided to create my own tones and obviously my Kemper. So I didn't have to take the head anywhere. And so now, which leads me to the Disruptor plugin that we got coming out with Joey Sturge's tones, you're gonna be able to hear some of those tones from those records, for all the classic Fear Factory records. It's gonna be available in that plugin. Well, what I really liked about that first Van Halen record is that the tone was pretty aggressive, but you can really hear all the notes articulated and you can hear his pick attack. And I was, I really fell in love with that tone. And it was the first time that I heard anything like that. You know, I was listening to old school bands like Iron Maiden and, and Judas Priest and stuff like that, Def Leppard and Molly Crew. But when I heard that first Van Halen record, I was like, wow, this is a guitar tone that really attracted me to it, you know? Back then, I was like influenced by all those bands, you know, by, you know, early ACDC and of course, you know, Metallica back in the early 80s. But there was something about that get first Van Halen get record that really stuck with me. And I really wanted to get that amp modified like that because I've heard around town in L.A. that he was, that Eddie Van Halen was getting it modified by certain people just to, just to, you know, give that extra boost, which later on became... I believe the 5150 and the AVHs and all that stuff, but I wanted to get that tone way back in the 80s. Uh, I wanted to get that tone. I wanted to use it for my, obviously I adapted it to my style, right? I mean, it might not sound like a Van Halen tone, but I wanted to get that in my, to be part of my sound. And the, and the classic record that you could hear, or you can really hear that is a, a, a record called D Manufacture that we recorded in 1994, but it came out in 1995. And it just sounds amazing. You can hear all the pick attack. You can hear all the uh, uh, intricate notes that I got. You know, I'm not really too much of a shred player. I'm more of a riff right hand type of player. And you can really hear all the pick attacks on that really well. 